So in the 416 area code in 2021, for the first eight months, we had over 30,000 transactions. Okay. Which was insane. The busiest year we ever had. Crazy year. Yeah. Last year, 2022, by end of uh, August, we had 22,000 sales. Mm. So, okay, big drop off, which made sense from the year before. This year, so far, we're at 17,000. Mm. So, easy, we're 40% down from 2021, and we are 15% down from last year. I don't care if you're middle class, upper middle class, lower class, on uh, in a on a street corner in a tent like you are feeling something looming right now like and depending on the industry you're in you could already be like seeing some pretty bad days already and so you know tensions are getting hotter you see people fighting on the 401 and you know you guys know for sure like you're talking to people that are either in denial and you know in trouble currently or about to be in trouble and kind of trying to get ahead of things but the, there's a common theme right now that like uh oh like maybe we should batten down the hatches right so so like what what's going on in tom story's world is it like is everybody happy is everything good or are people like f starting to freak out yeah. before you answer tom quickly let's just all come to the conclusion right now that the market is trending downwards. It is. That we're not here to pump the market in any way. It is that trending this, downwards. This market is three months of decline and, you know, continuing on that pace as far as we all know. So, yeah, go ahead. I would I would agree with that. So I'll give you two different answers. One for like an industry answer for real estate and then, and then a consumer answer based on the conversations I've been having. So I did a... um. I got hired. I do some public speaking stuff within the industry and I got hired by a, by a big brokerage to come in and do their kickoff event last week. And nice. I kind of I asked the room and this was a room of like some pretty big name real estate agents that, that you guys would know. And I'm like, how's everyone feeling right now? Like, is anyone happy with their year? Just like, give me a, a hands up if you're happy. Not one person. And everyone was like, we're, we're not feeling good right now. It's not going. That, that's not to say they're not doing any sales, right? It's just like they're not at what they're used to. Um, so I looked back and I ran the numbers till the end of August for the first eight months of the year. And so I pretty much trade in the 416 area code. So I just did 416. So in the 416 area code in 2021, for the first eight months, we had over 30,000 transactions. Okay. Which was insane. The busiest year we ever had. Crazy year. Yeah. Last year, 2022, by end of uh, August, we had 22,000 sales. Hmm. So, okay. Big drop off, which made sense from the year before. This year, so far, we're at 17,000. So easy, we're 40% down from 2021 and we are 15% down from last year. Mm. So like the math is pretty simple. If you're someone in the real estate industry that sells real estate for a living, the opportunities to do so are less and less than they've been from what you were used to. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are feeling it. People are having really, really tough years because also you know, TK, maybe you're seeing this in the team model. I'm having weekly conversations with people that want to join our team, but it's more of like a, can you save me because I don't know what to do? So, so there will who were be... successful at one point. Yeah. And now this year they're not having the, the, the year that they thought they would. Right. And not to sound like, like I want more people successful. to succeed. Yeah. I want people to succeed, but you know, a cleanse of the real estate industry is probably not the worst thing. No. Right. It's like, let's just get the people in here that actually know what they're doing and give good advice and aren't just running around hoping that the market's good. Like that's not what we need. Mm -hmm. no. We've had some pretty sharp people join recently. Yeah. So, which is great for the team model is you start, you're not just pulling in somebody in their first year, you're pulling in someone with 10 years and however many transactions and all this experience. And, and they just couldn't, uh, you know, get it together the last 18 months or whatever. And so they're realizing I better do something different. And then right, on right. top of that, with everything else, like I actually, I had a chat with a real estate agent yesterday when I was driving and he was like, I'm at this crossroads of my business and I'm doing pretty well, but I'm looking and I'm like, I thought I made good money, but I'm looking at my bank and I'm like, where do they all go? Mm -hmm. Right. And it was interesting because I was like, okay, well, let's do your business expenses. But what we figured out, it was his life expenses. It was sure. his mortgage. In the last two weeks, I'm a, I'm a YouTube premium guy for life. It, that went up a dollar per month. My my Disney went up a dollar per month. 
Something else went up a dollar per month. My my brokerage fees, this sounds silly, went up three dollars per month. Criminal. No, but it's all, all these things, one but, thing but, after the other, one on top of the other, on top of the other. And for a decent amount of time now, it's been just kind of compounding on itself. You said something that I think is exactly the issue. You said it's not at the level that they're used to, right? And not not only is it currently not, but they're forecasting out that it's going to get worse than it is now. And people are like, I can kind of hang on now. But if it gets worse, man, this is going to really like not be um, sustainable, right? Yeah. So, 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 but I don't even understand. So TK, you said you brought over some, some good guys. And Tom, you're saying that, you know, some people uh, that have had some success are kind of looking for a place to go now. But like, then there's just more of you in one room that are all going like, this sucks. There's nothing to do. Like, uh, can can we split that one? Like, what what the hell does the team do when they're still the same? Full of uh, real estate agents discussing uh, needs before. No, but no, but seriously, (laughs) like there's not any more sales to get. No, but getting a piece of one is better than. Yeah. getting nothing right and and i've said this for mm. a long time we talk about disruptors in the industry and you talk about these new tech platforms or whatever the biggest disruptor in the real estate industry the last 10 years has been tk's team not specifically you but that model because you guys have way more budget behind you way more marketing you have more administrative staffs so you can just focus on doing your job people that are going up against you guys and versions of you guys you yeah. know across the country there's a bunch of them in the last few years that are it's tough Major. to beat yeah. to get the market share from the teams that have that, you know, type of army behind them. Yeah. And that's where it's going. So we had a number out before, and I don't know what this is, but I'll just give an example. Is 10 years no, when I first started, so 15 years ago, nobody was doing a team. Like if there was a team, it was just a guy and he had an assistant, and that was it. And then about 10 years ago, teams came up and it was like, five percent of the business you know like it was just like they they just started to come around and maybe they'd be the top in their market or or whatever right but now that number again i'm making this up totally it would be like 20 percent of the business is now in the hands of the big large mega teams and i believe that that number will continue to grow there's gonna be and- more and more mega teams coming and growing and taking over market share and people will realize the consumer will say why would i hire my cousin, Jim, who's going to be doing it all, who doesn't have the marketing, who doesn't have the, the, the admin staff, who doesn't have the services, who doesn't have the experience. He's only selling 30 houses a year, as opposed to a team who could be doing 300, 600, 1,000. Some of them are doing crazy numbers. So, And, and Daryl, just for you and people listening that are like, what what's the difference to me as a consumer, right? Uh, they have someone specifically for everything. They have in-house staging, they have in-house marketing, and it actually is probably a better experience, right? Because because things are being being taken care of for you, and at the end of the day, real estate is also an extremely lonely business, and it's sometimes nice to talk to other people at the office instead of right, just sitting there. right. That's what I was getting at. Is it's like a, a more comfortable scenario to go through this. But okay, what, so one what's... just correction here, just before we move on, one yeah. agent can do the same job as a team. One agent can, but they can only do it for one client at a time. Right. which means by the end of the year, they sold 10 houses. And how much experience does that agent have after only selling, selling 10 houses in the last year? And they do that every year at that level of service right. compared to a team selling hundreds doing the same service, right? So right. now you have this experience factor. You're going to get more, your finger will be on the pulse. You're going to get better advice. You're going to have a much better experience because now you've got someone who's really in tune with what's going on. Like, comment, and subscribe if you got anything from one of these clips. And if you want to see some more, press something on the screen here. Boom. That was good. That was good. That was good. I like that. That was good.